Hello and welcome. I am David Norman, Managing Director of Deed Solar, and today we're going to show you how to reset your SunSync inverter. Okay, so um, what is the first thing we want to do when we're resetting the inverter? <clears throat> there is a procedure to follow, hence we're making the video. So the procedure is you want to start by turning the grid isolator off. Grid isolator is predominantly always going to look red and yellow. Um, so you're looking for a red and yellow switch local to your inverter. You might have two because we've got backup, we've got an EPS isolator and a grid isolator. It should be labelled by your installer, but typically speaking, um, you'll have the one grid isolator or otherwise known as the AC isolator. And you just want to turn that off. So you turn the grid off. So on top of the inverter, above the display, you have light indicators, DC, AC, normal, and alarm. DC, AC, and normal will be uh, green indicators and alarm will be red. So if there is a red alarm, then uh, the chances are you're probably watching this video because you've got a red alarm light <laughs> um, and maybe the resetting the system will resolve it. Um, but you'll have these indicators. So we've turned the grid off and our AC green indicator has gone out. Once the grid has been turned off, on the side of the inverter, on this left hand side, uh, is a on and off switch. So on the SunSync inverter, left hand side, you'll find an on and off switch. So now we're gonna switch our inverter off, which is the next step. So we're now pressing the on and off button, which is gonna turn our inverter off. Once we've pressed the button, so we've turned the grid off, we've pressed the button, this inverter will shut down we then want to turn the battery off so um, you necessarily don't need to wait for this display um, to go down because the, the next step is what's going to turn it off because you've got remember you've got three inputs you've got the panels you've got the battery and you've got the grid we've only turned one of those three inputs off so even though we've turned the inverter off on the grid and we've pressed the off button on the inverter we've still got an input from the battery and we've still got an input from the pv so the next thing we want to do is turn the battery off. So to do that, um, you know, you could have uh, a completely different battery to what we've got here. We've got a Fogstar. You might have a Pylon Tech. You might have a SunSync battery. Um, there's a whole range of batteries that it's compatible with. So the chances are you'll have a different battery. Um, on most batteries, you have a master slave configuration. Uh, it doesn't matter what way the configuration is because they're all interconnected with communication. So um, you will have on and off buttons and you will have on and off switches, which are like battery isolators on the side. We also have a battery fuse. That's not the most common, um, but you will definitely have an on and off switch or a battery switch or both on the battery itself, or on, on the individual battery. So we've got two stacks. So we're going to turn each battery off doesn't matter what way uh, the left one is our master and then we're going to turn off our DC switch on our batteries so turn the battery button off turn the DC switch off then I can turn the fuse off so battery's gone off and again we know this because uh, not on the light indicator at the top but on the symbol on the display we have a battery symbol which was showing power which has now dropped to zero and we know we've disconnected everything. So our batteries now are fully disconnected. So the only thing now connected to the inverter um, is the panels, which on the left hand side, underneath the on and off switch of the inverter, you have a DC isolator switch. Now you might have uh, external switches as well, which will be gray and black uh, or white and black. But you'll ha it will be, uh, whereas these are red and yellow, they will be black and grey. And they'll be, again, local to the inverter most likely. Uh, you can turn them off, but ultimately by turning it off here, regardless, you're turning it off anyway. So if you, even if you do have them, just by turning it off here, you're, you're turning off the DC of the inverter. Now horizontally is on, vertically is off. So we're currently on, and I'm now going to turn that off. So now we've turned off the grid, we've turned off the on and off button, we've turned off the batteries, and then we've turned off the PV. Now we've turned everything off. So why is this display still on? Because there's still energy inside the network. 
So voltage in the DC network takes a bit longer than it does to exit. So we're gonna wait for it to wind down um, for the voltage to leave the network. When it does, this will go completely blank. And there you go. So everything is now off. There's no energy in the network, there's no energy in the system, the inverter's fully isolated, everything is turned off. Now we've got a generation meter here, which is still on. Um, the light on this generation meter will probably go solid red when there's, uh, when there's no more current passing through it as it all leaves the network, um, which will indicate that there's um, no current passing through the meter. Solid red means no current passing through. Flashing red means current passing through, depending on the frequency of the flash, the more current. Um, so we've got a fully isolated system at this point, and uh, the next step is to turn it all back on and uh, reset it in sequence. And to do that, we follow the same sequence we did. So the first thing we wanna do is re-engage our grid connection, which is our red and yellow AC isolator. So we turn that on. Once we've turned the red and yellow isolator on, the AC isolator, then we wanna press the on and off button on the inverter. So on button on, that's indicated by a little blue uh, illuminated light on the button. I've turned that on, so I've got my grid on and I've turned my inverter on, on the button. Now we've got our display back on. So now we've just turned it on, we will expect the AC indicator to be on. And as you can see, they just come on. So that's telling us we've got AC connection. So that's perfect. So the next step, once we've got the AC on, is to uh, re-engage our batteries. So the batteries are the next step. So I'm gonna shut my fuse. Uh, I'm gonna turn on my batteries via the switch on the side. Doesn't matter what order, if you've got master and slave, just turn them on. So once the switches are on, I'm pressing my on buttons. Now my batteries have uh, engaged. We will now wait for the inverter to come on because ultimately at this point, the inverter, remember, will work without panels. So you could just have batteries and that, should, that can provide a load for the home. Or, or that can uh, meet the home load demand. So we can see on the indicated display that we've got an AC load of 260 watts. And um, what we're gonna wait for is our battery. So we've, the icons we've got is solar, AC, and battery and grid. So the AC load is saying it's 260 watts. Our battery is zero because it's not turned on yet. Even though we've turned them on, We've only got standby lights showing on the battery, and remember, it'll be different on different batteries. But you'll know by hearing the inverter, because what happens is it, the batteries and the inverter are now talking to each other. The inverter's saying, the battery's saying, please let me in, I want to come in. And the inverter's saying, well, wait, let me check and make sure it's safe to allow you in. And what it's doing is self-test. When you introduce DC into a something converter, it normally takes about five minutes to engage it. Um, whilst it does it self checks internally. So don't be alarmed like we have, we've just turned it on. The inverter is basically a machine, it's a mini computer and it's doing those tests internally to say, yes, the circuit's okay, it's safe, I'm gonna turn on and when it does, you'll hear the relays clicking and the inverter will set. And then once we see that and hear that, this battery uh, symbol will go up and it will match the load that we see on the display because ultimately the battery should be covering the load. We've got enough storage in our battery to cover the load. Obviously, that won't happen if you haven't got storage in your battery. If your battery's are flat, then you won't see that. And if your batteries are flat, you'll know by on your batteries, you'll have an indicated light. And if that light isn't showing you uh, storage, then you'll have to bypass the waiting because it's never gonna meet the load. So just move on to the next step on here we've got fully charged batteries so we can we can uh we can wait and we can prove that the battery is working and then once we have that proof we'll move on to turning the dci satter on which should be any minute now um we should see uh my batteries have just turned on so i know that they're close and i can hear the clicking So the relays were clicking, so the self-tests are done. Batteries have now fully come on. So they're all engaged and now we're meeting the load. 
and it says on the uh, illustration on the front, the display, no battery. That's just changed, so it's now recognized the battery. So, as it stands right now, the inverter's working, the batteries are working, that's all live. The batteries and the inverter are energized and they're powering the home. So now, we've, we've, we can introduce a new segment to the inverter or a, a new addition, which is the PV. So uh, back to our PV isolator, which is on the side of the inverter. So vertical is off, horizontal is on. So now we're gonna go horizontal and we're gonna engage the PV. And what we're doing is we're allowing the voltage into the inverter. Um, and again, this is identified by the LEDs. So our DC indicator has now come on. And because that DC icon is on, um, that means that we should be able to see our generation here. So on here it's showing me solar is generating 4.5 kilowatts. My uh, home load is being satisfied. The, the difference between my load and my generation is surplus energy, which is actually now going into my battery and charging my battery at four kilowatts. Um, and that's it, so it's been fully reset. What you wanna see up here, if you've got solar, the DC icon is solo, it's nothing to do with the battery, even though the battery's DC, um, just by engaging the battery, that DC light won't come on. So don't be alarmed when you turn the batteries on and the DC light is off, because the DC light only is there to identify the panels and the PV. So now we've got DC on, AC on, and the normal light is on. So that's telling us everything's normal, we don't have an alarm light. If you do have an alarm light and it's come back on, then um, let's say you was doing the reset to try to um, see if the alarm light would clear. If the alarm light hasn't cleared, the chances are it's, some, the, the most common problem that we see is the battery voltage, uh, especially over the winter, the voltage drops below what they call SOC, which is state of charge. Um, the batteries drop below the state of charge so the inverter can't recognize the battery anymore because it's below the threshold of its identification. Um, and, and that just could be as simple as that. Um, what we would do in that scenario is we would force charge the batteries to bring them up with like a DC bench charger above the SOC. Um, it could be firmware related. It could be a variety of reasons. Like I say, this is a machine. It's like a computer and it is constantly detecting and looking for para um, parameters. So when things fall out of those parameters for safety reasons, it goes into alarm. Um, so don't be alarmed if the alarm light's on, it's there for a good reason. And if doing a reset doesn't work in remedying a problem, then the best thing to do is either look through more of our videos, um, which might help, or equally give us a call and we can do an on-site service or contact a local installer. Um, you know, do the reset as the first protocol, then if that don't work, probably at that point, I would say contact an installer, um, but just don't be alarmed. Ultimately, these things are all designed in a way for safety, and so they're there for safety reasons. Um, okay, so we've done a reset, everything's back on, we've got all of our normal lights, lights flashing away on there. That is how you reset a SunSync inverter. Uh, any comments, um, leave them down below. If you've uh, got a sun sink and you've got different batteries, let us know what batteries you've got as we're always interested to know what systems people have. Um, we have on our channel a full uh, video on the setup of this system, which is a bespoke system and you know, really cool video. Go over there, have a look, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and think ring.